think. Okay. Uh, so this is my snake game. And uh, the first thing you probably notice is the weird characters are flashing inside of it. And uh, that's because my snake game doesn't actually contain any like data structure or any information on the snake's body. And it uses a weird algorithm that uh, just tracks the head and the tail to determine uh, what part of the snake to remove and overwrite, right? So, uh, you know, if you hadn't noticed, this is in... This is not in any graphics, this is in text mode, right? So, essentially what the algorithm does is just tracks the head according to player input, so... You know, every single uh, time you go left or right, then the, the head goes in that direction. And uh, every single time that before, you know, it takes some player input, Oh shit. Before it takes some player input, it uh, overwrites the head with uh, another light green character, which it overwrites the head with another light green character that uh, you can't really see well on VirtualBox, but I'm only using VirtualBox because it's better for recordings. And uh, it overwrites the head with one of those light green characters to create uh, the next create the next body character in the snake and uh, it takes some player input and then updates the head and then writes the head in a new position right so uh, you know it attracts the X and Y coordinate of the head and it tracks the X and Y coordinate of the tail and uh, what the tail does every single tick is that it detects uh, the four positions around it to first determine uh, if it has a light green background, right, which is what every single body character is written with. And then to determine uh, which one of these uh, characters surrounding it, the light green background has a, or has the smallest numerical value. So once it detects the character with the smallest numerical value and a light green background, uh, the tail will eat that character and replace it in its X and Y position and update it accordingly, right? So, essentially what the snake is, is that it's uh, two body parts on each end of it. Uh, just tracking those body parts and deleting the body parts, or adding the body parts between them, right? Depending on if we're talking about the head or the tail. And, um... Uh, oh shit, I think the code's kind of, like, I think it's a little bit more robust than a lot of traditional snake code, but I kind of wanted to make it like a unique snake game in that sense and uh you know i don't really want to do things like you know just add something just for the sake of adding it i kind of want to do it in my own unique or fun way that makes it uh interesting right it's also the reason why uh the snake glows and brights different colors or different characters inside of it right because you can only fit so much information within two bytes so you do have to, uh, I had to add like different ASCII characters for each of the snake body parts. If you notice, you notice uh, each ASCII character, each new ASCII character that spawns behind the, the head is uh, larger in value than the last one. And every single time uh, the ASCII character overflows, it gets a new color, which we'll see right here, I think. Yeah, semen went from red to purple. And uh, it's, it is possible for it to overflow, right? But uh, you have to be playing for a while, and this is an older version of the Snake game that I'm playing off of, like my backup of this project on a USB stick. So uh, you know, if I wanted to fix the overflow problem, I could just reset uh, the Snake or the Tail by uh, you know every single time it only has one light green character surrounding it, it could just reset the color and the ASCII character, and that'd be a pretty easy fix. Uh, if I w even wanted to go farther than that, I could just uh, have it use some background characters as well besides green. But you know, I think that's over. I think if a player plays long enough and they get all the way to white characters, uh, then they should be allowed to just cut off the snake. Because that's what it used, it used to just a tail would cut off part of the snake and then leave body parts behind. That would just kill you if you touch it. So, uh,. 
you know, I think if the player does that for long enough or plays long enough, then they should be allowed to do that, because why not? And, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a, quite a few bugs in this older version, actually. I think in the game over screen, you can tell a lot of attacks is misaligned as well, so. Uh, yeah, it's definitely not going to be the final version that's going to be in the new video, but it is what it is, right? Uh, it's a pretty unique snake game, and I think it's, uh, most snake games don't read directly from memory to detect where the snake's body is, but, you know, I'm at 57 now, holy shit, I could really just make this the entire video, just me, it could be like a let's play, just play a fucking snake game the entire time, I'll probably have to edit this and yeah, my phone's dying, so, yeah, I'm recording this on my phone, by the way. I don't have, like, any professional setup or anything like that at all. <sighs> yeah, um, if you're, wanting, if you're wondering why the latest video's been taking a while to come out, it's because, uh, it's June, it's the end of uh, my school quarter, and I have a lot of work and a lot of different group projects and finals and shit to do, so that's sort of been eating up a lot of my time recently. It's given me less time to make content for this channel or to really do anything besides uh, schoolwork, right? But, uh... Around when July starts, or when this quarter ends, right, I'll be able to work on Osaka OS a lot more frequently. You know, as much as I used to, at least, right? Or maybe just other content on this channel that I want to make, since I kind of want to do, like, a bunch of creative stuff on here. And, uh, you know, just for the sake of doing it, I guess. Which is, uh, no, oh shit, I'm dead, yeah. This older version, uh, it doesn't reset the speed after you die, so now we're just fucking stuck in, like, hard mode, but, uh, fuck, it's whatever. Uh, I wanted to talk about, uh, creativity and making software, since a lot of people who make software, uh, now, maybe, maybe it's not a new thing, but I've noticed, like, even a lot of, uh, my classmates or people that I talk to who are into, who are, like, computer science people who are into making software in some way. They're not very creative. I mean, they are creative, but they don't like being creative or making creative software. And I think that's kind of a shame since a lot of people that I know will just make software or work on projects, software projects, that uh, just fill out some specific like checkbox in a resume or something like that. Or uh, show, can like show a potential employer <clears throat> Oh, what they're able to do, right? But it'll be like the same, like You know, it'll be like a Twitter bot or it'll be a uh, It'll be like some like generic crowd application that doesn't really have any use to it I can't get this pee and, You know, that's perfectly fine, you know, if you want to go into If you want to go into like software or computer science just for the money and you just care about making things that an employer would like. Uh, you know, I have no problem with that, but I do think a lot of people went into software because they just wanted to make cool things with computers. And uh, that's sort of the reason why I decided to study it, right? And it's just kind of a shame how a lot of people sort of lose that creative instinct uh, at some point. Or they would start on projects and they'll keep working on them. And uh, eventually they'll just give up on the project because, you know, it didn't really mean anything to them because they didn't really care about the project in the first place. I think that sucks as well. I'm going fast as fuck right now. Holy okay, um. I can't get this one piece. But, uh. I see, like, a similar thing when people talk about. Uh, Temple OS, right? Because I watched a, a YouTube video that was recommended to me recently. And it was talking about 
Uh, you know, it was, it was another video about Temple of West, I was decided, fuck it, I'll just watch it, why not, I have nothing better to do. And, uh, there were, there was a comment that said something along the lines of, uh, yeah, sure, it's impressive, but it's useless, I don't know why anybody cares about this, it has no function, it has no networking, it's, it's useless, nobody's gonna use this for anything useful. Which, uh, is a, you know, it's not the most uncommon take on Temple OS and what Terry Davis did there, right? But it definitely does show a sort of uh, attitude a lot of people have towards software. I don't know if it's software people exactly or maybe non-technical people writing those comments, but uh, a lot of people only really care about software or compare about any technology for um, the creative, or not the creative, or just the functional value it has to them, you know, what it can do for them. And, uh, you know, that's obviously, like, it makes sense, right? Like, software, first and foremost, is a tool to be used to accomplish a uh, specific task, right? But, um... Man, this piece always spawning in the corner? I need to fix that as well. Or I'm back again because the snake game got way too fucking fast. But uh, what was I talking about? Yeah. Um, no, if people just care about software for its functional use, then that's perfectly fine, right? But I think uh, a lot of people undervalue the creative aspects or even like the artistic value that a lot of software could have. Uh, you know, I think that's kind of a shame since there's a lot of creative things you could do with software. Uh, so much so that pretty much every single creative field from music to movies to art uses software in some shape or form, right? But uh, not a lot of people care about creative software or software as like a creative uh, endeavor, right? Uh, maybe people care about video games since I guess that's the most best, that's the best example people, I guess, you know, it comes to mind of creative software. But uh, they really only care, they don't care about the actual, like, game or game logic itself. Uh, they really just care about, you know, when I think about art and video games, you think about music, you think about story, you think about the characters, you think about all these other uh, artistic fields that go into it, but you don't think about, like, the physics engine or anything like that, right? You don't think about... Uh, the exact gameplay mechanics, unless you're, you know, one of those freaks who, who's like really into game analysis or game development, right? And, uh, you know, I kind of am. Or at least I have a passive appreci appreci appreciation of it. Jesus Christ, I can't fucking say anything today. Oh, my, ph my phone's on 10%. Fucking GG, so my shit's done for. But, uh... Yeah, I, I like making, like, sort of creative, silly software that doesn't really have any use to it. Which is sort of what I've made this entire project center around. Which is, you know... No no one's going to use Osaka OS for anything. They're not going to use it to do their taxes. They're not going to use it to do whatever the fuck they need to do. They're obviously not going to use it to, like, browse YouTube or anything like that, right? Or uh, even play music on, you know, the piano program, but... Or even use it for like entertainment. There's probably more entertaining snake apps out there than this. But uh, I still think it holds like some art. I still think it holds some artistic value to it, right? And uh, even if you don't think, I'm not saying it's like high art or anything. Obviously, it's not. But uh, I do think it's like a cool creative project. That's like. Maybe like a software equivalent to like some shit post fucking album or EP somebody would put out, right, on SoundCloud or Bandcamp or whatever, right? And uh, I think it's valuable because of that, not even because of what it can or can't do. I think it's valuable just because of, uh, you know, what it is and its uh, uniqueness in a sense. Or that's what I want it to be valued based off of, right? And, um... You know, making the snake game, I sort of got reminded of that, right? I sort of got reminded of that. I didn't really make this project just to say I made an operating system and to put a bunch of features in that I don't really care about. I sort of want to make the features also 
uh, a reflection of the project as a whole. I want to make them as, I guess, silly or ridiculous or unconventional as a project itself. And, uh, you know, I want to keep it that way, right? But, you know, it is what it is, I guess. I don't really know what the purpose of this video is at this point. I don't know how unedited it's going to be. I might just trim out the fat and make, you know, make sure I just got everything I wanted to be in there, be in there. But yeah, this is sort of a throwaway video. The sort of just stall until I have enough time to do everything I need to do and edit the new video. Since, uh, most of my time is working on like school work, as I said, so. And uh, the next video I have planned after this one, it's gonna be kind of unique in a sense that it's gonna be kind of different from the past ones. It's still gonna contain the same, like I'm not gonna do anything too drastic. It's just gonna contain the same format of, you know, um, I put text on a screen over music and photos and videos of the operating system of what I've added in the past month or so, right? And uh, so this one is sort of going to switch focus on, I guess, the overall tone of the video and exactly what I'm adding to the operating system itself. And, uh, you know, I don't want to spoil anything. The next video will probably be, it'll probably take maybe a little bit longer to make. Maybe it'll be shorter. I don't know, but it's definitely gonna be a longer video on the next one. It's gonna be more than like five minutes, definitely. So, uh, yeah, I guess hopefully that makes up for the long wait times. Then again, I, I don't think people care that much about how long these videos take to make since uh, they're not really actively looking at my channel in the first place, you know, like uh, other content creators who put out content pretty regularly like that, like every other day or so. And, uh, that's pretty much all I had to say in this video, you know. Moral of the story, um, keep making software that, oh shit, wait, <sighs> keep making software that, uh, is creative or has, like, that sort of creative spirit to it, since, uh, oh, we might enter your overflow here, hold on. There it is, there it is, see, that was, that was what I was talking about in the beginning of the video. They pick it back up, oh shit. Oh, but anyways, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I need to continue making the snake game not a buggy mess. And uh, keep editing that new video, right? But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, moral of the story, keep making software that's creative or fun or interesting for you, right? Even if you think it has no functional use or people aren't gonna care about it, right? You'll probably improve in your skills from making it and you'll probably just enjoy it, you know, just looking back on it as well. Since uh, I have a few projects that I worked on that are pretty much useless, right? But I still enjoyed the process of making them and I enjoyed, uh, you know, I guess, the creativity that went into making them as well since they're not really the most generic or bland projects out there, but uh, yeah, I mean, oh shit, that was a nice save, but uh, yeah, I think it's important to just keep a sort of childlike mindset when it comes to making things, anything really, whether it's related to software, engineering, or art, right, what's traditionally considered art. Because um, no, those are those are things that you really just those are like small things that you get appreciation out of in life. And that everything is going to be like some big bombastic, um, I guess, innovation and in technology or what have you, right? It's going to be. I mean, first and foremost, it's going to be like something that you just made because you wanted to make it. And if you're going to make something, make sure you actually want to make it first, right? Unless you're doing it for like a job, obviously, but if you're doing it under free time, 
I think something that's very creative and very interesting uh, is going to keep up your interest over the course of the project and keep you wanting to work on it, right? Uh, so that's pretty much it. I didn't really have much to say for this video. I pretty much just talked out my ass for the better part of 10 minutes or so, however long the fuck this video is. But, uh, I mean, yeah, that's about it. Um, I have a lot of video to edit after this. But yeah, um, that's about it. Um, hope you have a good day. Thank you for listening. Fuck this game. I'm, I'm done. Goodbye.